everyone, you are welcome once again to the Surefire Life Conference, a platform that the Almighty God has given us to make simple, clear, and available the message of eternal life. Uh, in case you are joining us for the first time, that is the focus of this platform. And so everyone who joins, we have every one of us, we have two roles. One, to learn and gain eternal life. And two, to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, to spread, spread this message of eternal life. Of course, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And through him, we have received eternal life. Let us take our opening prayer in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us again today to yourself. We surrender to you, our God, and we ask by your Spirit, lead us. Lord, we ask that you take all glory in this meeting, in this program, that today, all that we will do will be pleasing unto you. Thank you, our Father and our God, for we have asked in Jesus' mighty name. At this point, we hand over to you by your Spirit, teach us your word. Holy Ghost, it is time for you to magnify Jesus in the word, even the word of God. Give us understanding. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our mind to perceive, to receive, to discern, to understand, even the word of God. And let your word transform us, transform our lives into the glorious image of the sons and daughters of God, according to your will. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So our teaching today, our topic today is eternal life enduring till the end. Eternal life enduring till the end. Our text is Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 and 13, verses 12 and 13 rather. Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 and 13. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures till the end will be saved. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures till the end will be saved. That's our text, enduring till the end. Before I delve into the focus of today, enduring till the end, let's just remind ourselves of what we dealt with last Sunday when we talked about the topic for the first time, eternal life, eternal life. A bit of summary, just some key points. It, we said eternal life is the spirit of life that God has given to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Eternal life is the spirit of life, the, the life of God that God himself has given to us through his son, Jesus Christ. That therefore implies anyone who has received Jesus has received eternal life already. Anyone who has received Jesus has received eternal life already. Uh, you, in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, there the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free, has set me free, has set you free from the law of sin and death. So, it is why we also said that it is why we are here on earth, in this part of life, that we receive eternal life. 
and are sealed. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit and our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. It is why we are here on earth in this part of life that we receive eternal life and are sealed with the Holy Spirit and our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. You remember the references for that? Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. You must write these scriptures down and read them for yourselves. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Ephesians 4, 30. Ephesians 4, 30. So when you have this kind of assurance, you know that even though we die in this physical world, yet we shall live. And at the resurrection, we shall be transformed into the glorious image of the Son of God. We shall be like him, just as he is. Who is he there? Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. You see, a, a bit on that, when we talk about the resurrection, oftentimes people forget how Jesus resurrected from the dead. It was his body that was transformed. So the spirit of life in transform that body that was dead and so it is that transformed body and that's what first corinthians chapter 15 teaches if you go and read it said we shall be transformed i believe first thessalonians chapter 5 or so also but that's a subject for another day we will come to that the focus of today is enduring till the end the end of this physical life, this world, that's what we are saying. After you have received eternal life, as we have already stated, that it is why you receive Jesus, why in this part of life, in this world, that's when you are given eternal life and are sealed with the seal of God, the Holy Ghost, and your name is written in the book of life. Our names are written in the book of life that guarantees us eternal life at the resurrection however in this physical world there is a dimension of time a dimension of time which god has created for man again you must remember hear this and hear me clearly god does not exist in time god does not exist in space God exists in eternity. So there is no night, there is no uh, darkness in God. God exists in light. There is no day and night with God. Day and night only exist in this part of life on the earth. So God has created time for mankind. So within the time that we exist, having received the seal of God, the seal of eternal life, there is need for endurance. There is need for enduring because it is only those who endure till the end that will be saved eternally. There are people who have received this grace as people asked me earlier in the teaching, is it possible for somebody having received this eternal life, this spirit of life to fall? To, and we said it is possible, however, it is very difficult if you choose to stay with Jesus. It is only possible if you decide to damn yourself and the only way to do that is by denying Jesus. So I think the point to also make around the teaching of last uh, Sunday 
is that we emphasize that as there is eternal life, there is eternal damnation. And that eternal damnation is by denying Jesus. That's it. As that first John chapter 11 says, going all the way down. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. He that does not have the son of God does not have life. That's it. So, enduring till the end. Why must we endure till the end? Why, why endurance? In the text that we read, you will see that the world is lawless. It's a lawless place. In that text that we read, the Bible makes it clear that because lawlessness will increase, it will abound. The love of many will grow cold. This is why it becomes necessary to endure. The second point to note is that the devil continues to attack with all ungodliness, making the love of many to grow cold. If you remember the parable that Jesus told of a sower that went to sow seeds, you remember he said that the seeds fell on different types of soils, the stony ground on the way among thorns, and then on the fertile ground. And you remember that the seed that fell on the way, it said the birds of the air came and ate it up. And he said that bird of the air is the devil himself. And he said the one that fell among thorns, he said the curse of life, choke it up. And he said the one that fell amongst uh, the stony ground, he said it began to grow, but when the trials, the difficulties of life came, he could not endure. This is why we need to endure till the end. Endure is to persevere. It is to never give up no matter the challenges. It is to say, I'd rather die than to deny Jesus and lose eternal life. And this brings us to um, the video of uh, one of one brother, the testimony. I believe many of you would have uh, looked at it because I shared it and asked us to look at the testimony of that brother. Praise the name of the Lord. Where the militants captured him, came to his house and captured him and told him, deny Jesus. Oh, and he told them, I cannot deny Jesus. And they said, then you are ready to die. He said, yes, I, I cannot deny Jesus. And they shot him. And blood flowed out of him. And they touched his leg. He was gone and they left. But the miracle happened. Jesus raised him up because it was not yet his time. Glory be to God. Brothers and sisters, no devil can kill you. Fear not until you fulfill your purpose here. But even if that brother had departed, you know, he has received the seal of eternal life already. He has received eternal life in this part of life. This is what we are talking about. So enduring also means the capacity to outlast your enemy and all challenges of life, despite the wear and tear, the wear and tear. How do we endure? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, 
tells us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That is point one. We endure by looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. If you look at that scripture, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Beloved, look to Jesus, who gives grace and do like he did. How did Jesus endure the cross? He set the joy of the cross before him. He knew that after the cross would come victory. He knew the father will raise him up even though he suffered and died on the cross. He knew that by the cross you and I would be saved and become his own children and the children of the most high God. He knew he would reign forever as the king of kings and lord of lords. He will reign over Satan and Satan will be under his feet forever if he endured the cross. Oh, for the joy that was set before him, Jesus Christ, he endured the cross. So you have to know the joy of eternal life and set it before yourself. You set it as your goal and vision that I rather die in this life than lose eternal life. Oh, for the joy of being in the presence of Jesus Christ forever. Oh, for the joy of singing with the angels of God, glorifying the almighty God, our creator, forever. Oh, for that joy. What on earth here can compare with that joy? For the joy that was set for, before Jesus Christ, he endured the cross. If you can set the joy of eternal life, if you can for a moment picture yourself in the presence of the almighty God who created you, Paul said that I may know him. That I may know him. He said, I count everything but loss. I count my degrees as nothing. I count my status as nothing. I count all my privileges as nothing so that I may know him. He said, I run this race not as one that is uncertain. I bring my body under subjection so that I, after I might have preached to others, may not be a cast away. Oh, for the joy that was set before Christ, he endured the cross. Set the joy of eternal life before yourself, before your faith, and that will motivate you to endure till the end. Number two, study the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you you need to understand the Bible, the word of God, the promises of God. Because when you know the promises of God, you will know how to abide and how to abound and how to endure. Number three, prepare ahead by doing what you study in the scripture. Prepare ahead by doing what you study in the Bible, what you study in the scripture. And one of the key things in preparing ahead is to learn to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. To learn to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I want us to look at Matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13. It's a very long read, so we may not be able to take all. But this is the story of the ten virgins. The story of the ten virgins. I will just read 
a few points. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. They took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. You are that vessel and the oil is the Holy Ghost. It is the oil in you, the vessel that will cause your lamp to shine. Hallelujah. Verse 5. But while the bridegroom was delayed, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. This is how it, the cry the shout of the trumpet shall come when Jesus come. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet him. It is only those who have filled their vessel with the Holy Ghost and continually fellowship with him who will be ready, who will hear this voice. Verse 7. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. You know, I've always told us that the Holy Ghost is the one who makes the difference. Look at it. All of them had lambs. What does lamb do? It gives light. So there are people who are laboring in different ways, in different forms. And they say they are serving God, but without oil in their lamb. The oil of the Holy Ghost. It is only those who have the oil of the Holy Ghost and constantly fellowship with him, doing their service by the enablement of the Holy Ghost to please God in the name of Jesus that will be ready to meet the bridegroom. So they all trim their lambs. Verse 8, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lambs are going out. Our lambs are going out. There will be a time of falling away, but the Holy Ghost in you will keep you. The Holy Ghost in me will keep me. The joy of eternal life will help us to endure by the Holy Ghost that is in us. They said, our lambs are going out. Those services that they were performing by their own enablement and their own power, by their own schemes and skills are fading away. Even their master, the devil, will abandon them. What did the wise answer them? Verse 9. But the wise answered saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Brethren, there will be a time where people will be begging us for the Holy Ghost ministration, the word of God, and they will not have it. There will be scarcity of the word. They will be looking for where to now hear the truth, the truth will be scarce to them. It will be too late because when they had the opportunity to receive Jesus, receive the word, and thereby receive the oil in their vessel, they were foolish. They didn't receive. So, verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Hallelujah. And those who were ready, readiness, that's the key word. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Glory be to God. Readiness. 
fellowshipping constantly in the Holy Ghost. Let me move to point number four because of time. Point number four is the one we're used to. Live by faith and love. Live by faith and love. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13 says, Now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Love is the greatest, brothers and sisters, we must live in love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. God is love. By faith, we shall quench all the arrows of the devil. According to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says there above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the fiery darts of the wicked. When you combine faith and love, there is no power of the devil that you will not be able to trample on that foot as the scripture says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Jesus said to us, Behold, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Beloved, love dictates that you forgive all men, no matter what that person did to you. And that our brother that we just talked about is an epitome of that love. While they were um, uh, interviewing him, if you listen to that video, he said, I have forgiven those militant enemies who shot me, who thought they have killed me because they wanted to force me to deny Jesus. I cannot deny Jesus, but I love them. He said, I wish I have opportunity. I will hug them and will tell them, I love, I love you, brother. Oh, glory be to God. And he said, I pray for them that the almighty God will change their lives. That is love in action. Finally, brothers and sisters, you have to do the work of ministry of Jesus Christ. You have to do the work of ministry of Jesus Christ. You have to be doing something continually for the Lord, the work of ministry of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 11, verse 3, 4 to 6. Is a story um, that the disciples of John, or John sent people, John sent people to Jesus Christ. He said to him, are you the coming one or are we to look for another? Ah, this is the same John that testified. He said, I didn't know him, but the spirit said to me, the one whom you see, the Holy Spirit, descend and rest upon him. He said he is he. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. That same John. Oh, now because there was trial. Now because he was imprisoned. Ah, because there was difficulty. There was challenge. That same John sent a message of doubt to Jesus. He said, ask him, are you the one, the coming one, or are we to look for another? And Jesus answered him. He said, go and tell John, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up. And the gospel is preached. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Beloved, if you have to endure, you must never be offended because of Jesus. 
No matter how tough it may seem, know that Jesus is faithful forever. I believe you should listen to that testimony of that brother again. Play that video. If he needs to raise you up from the dead, he will raise you up. If he doesn't need to raise you up from the dead, declare like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They answered King Nebuchadnezzar. They said, oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. The God whom we serve, the God that created the heavens and the earth, he is able to save us from your hand. However, if he chooses not to deliver us, we do not care. And thank God who lost such daring children of God. Nebuchadnezzar got very angry, threw them into the fiery furnace. But suddenly, the fourth man appeared. And Nebuchadnezzar recognized him. And he said, did we not throw three men into the fire? How come there is a fourth? And his appearance is like the son of God. Nebuchadnezzar knew Jesus, the son of God, the moment he saw him. Jesus will appear on your behalf any time, any day, as he chooses, if only you choose to endure till the end. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, Jesus commanded us, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Beloved, this is the mandate of the master for us to endure till the end. We endure by living fearlessly, doing the will of God. We are to occupy by doing the Holy Ghost ministry. The Holy Ghost ministry, what he asks you to do, do. The mother of Jesus told his disciple, whatever he asked you to do, that do. We are to do the Holy Ghost ministry, serving humanity with power and gifts of God for God's glory till we depart this world. That is how to endure. Don't be like the foolish virgins whose oil ran out. You will not run out in Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads to pray. As you have heard this word, are you like the foolish virgin that have not yielded your life, your vessel, to be filled with the oil of the Holy Ghost? You have to yield yourself to Jesus. As we pray now, surrender your heart to him and just tell him, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I repent of my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Give me the Holy Ghost, Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus, and become a son, a daughter of God, and then begin to live this life, enduring till the end, just as the Spirit of God has taught us now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that has come forth with power, and we ask for the grace to endure till the end, to do all your will and your purpose for our lives, till Jesus comes. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.